My primary artistic action right now is my practice of producing large-scale affirmations of black life in the public realm. I sing of black joy in the hour of chaos. Black life, famous when dead. Our lives matter then. Sure, yeah, man, all lives matter, man, but look at my skin. Black joy. In my body, freedom is a geometry of rolling spheres and running triangles. Grown men ungendered at the speed of pursuit in advance of the sweet strike off the chest in the air off the thick front of the angry swinging foot. I never feel more free than in the running second after the ball beats the goalie, hits the net, beats time, gives me breath. Um, you're about to um, see some progress work from a piece called Pelota. Nothing promised but the passing. Quitting enough to fester the fostered giving up in the convent quiet of everlasting. Ever silenced, aging other. Truth and wound are wound in rounded womb of sound and student bluster. Departing water, accepted ovum, except in love a life excerpt. Episodes of Tarot's daughters, springtime sons, fishermen's quarrels, westward hums and homes, this life of guns and ohms this life of circles, of hiding, of journeys, of passing, everlasting, ever silenced, ever known. Donald's grandfather was born in Germany. Friedrich Drumpf, D-R-U-M-P-F, Drumpf. Passing is heritage in America. My grandparents too came here without possession. Moving without the ball is the immigrant story. Strategizing in place, keeping pace with other lions. Lying in wait, break away, weigh your options, then wait, then pray. Just keep pace while the keeper of the ball kick takes the focus. Just keep pace, eyes wide open, yield to the flow you cannot suspend. Bend, but don't break. Focus on the goal, but have your eye on it all, because maybe you'll catch a break. Until you do, you're moving without the ball, just trying to keep pace. Steam train whistling Dixie, elegy of migrant pride hidden like a broken cast of the past in the ashes of a myth unspoken heard broken word broken heart under fist keep it moving on the run you can't get walled in son keep pace without possession they just might hear the sound of us running but we've gotten so used to moving out of sight that they will never see us coming So why soccer? And why am I making a freedom suite? Well, um, my inquiry began in South Africa at the advent of the 2010 World Cup. It's complicated and resurgent. Freedom under government control. Investment in stadiums a few kilometers away from destitute informal settlements of shacks and exposure. The equity of access to the ball, everyone touching it. A game of equals under the duress of corruption. It makes me wonder, what do we pass down in this lifetime? Makes me think of the deafness of Messi to Iniesta to Neymar to Suarez to Messi to go to the feeling of release. How quick to pass, to run, to pass, to joy. How many of us passing now? How much of a pass do I get? Born black across the impossible blue. Makes me think of how the future is passed from the past. It makes me wonder, what 
what would happen, black people, if we pass down liberation in the same way? As long as we're passing down habits or language or genes, what would happen if we pass down in blood memory the feeling of being free? In South Africa, near the township, a tire fire. Behind a, near, uh, uh, behind a nearby gate, the boys, aggressive and fearless on the pitch. I see the choreography in the way they move without the ball. I hear the poem that connects them to my great-great-grandparents walking up a Haitian mountain. That's Pelota. For the last two years, I've been using a lot of highfalutin language to describe the interconnectedness of this um, uh, colliding phenomena, but in the end, uh, the core of this journey is more emotional and cerebral and more urgent than philosophical. I don't remember the third girl I ever kissed, but I do remember the third goal I ever scored. Here's this thing I've been doing all my life, a signifier of a way to feel in my body and it's beginning to elude me. My tendons and muscles say it's probably not best to play free. Can you imagine aging? Can you imagine the thing that makes you feel ageless? Pelota is the story of losing my body and the grip of the game on my spirit. The way love is joy and pain, that's how I feel about the game. Forty years later, it still breaks my heart. In 2016, I wear a Hamilton t-shirt uh, at a poetry reading at Georgia Tech. 18-year-old um, freshmen and 70-year-old something professors greet me after the show with generous mumbling about my poems and then wide open sincere curiosity. Yo, can you get me a ticket to Hamilton? on a southern campus full of elite young engineers and biotechnologists in training. Every color, creed, and stripe loves a hip-hop Broadway musical. Most have never seen it. Hamilton is the theater's version of the bootleg recording that your cousin made of Red Alert's Midnight Set on KISS FM in like 1983. Okay, it's not from your city, but you know this new music by heart and you wanna represent. So uh, Kendrick performed a hip hop theater piece with fire and West African dance and shit at the Grammys. And we elected Obama in 08 and survived long enough to watch him go to Cuba in 2016 and marriage equality and Hamilton. So we won, right? <laughs> By those tropes of representation, isn't this what our victory was supposed to look like? So let's begin with the truth that as we make media, as we make art, as we contribute to culture, this has never really been about representation. Although that's a very meaningful metric and clearly Oscar's so white and fucking girls, really, Lena Dunham, like through what white magic did you presage and manifest the disappearance of black people from Brooklyn? Um, however, um, the conversation we entered as artists and educators at the turn of this century was never just about representation, but about accountability, about we as living legacy, a relationship to the social contract as played out through artistic curation, intentional pedagogy, and land stewardship, liberation theology. The young poets say, uh, get free. The question 15 years ago was who gets to make the theater, who gets to make the movies, who gets to make the season. Perhaps today's question has learned from mistakes and raised the stakes. Who gets to make the city in an era of resegregation? Who gets to make the new world and how? Um, in this room, culture is not something that you go to. It's something you make. It is one of the end products of your labor. I've been thinking about Muhammad Ali's labor in the ring and the cultural ideas he produced out of it. Um, I've begun to rehear these words uh, that I wrote about him many years ago. Um, when I speak them now, they're like this three minute eulogy. Uh, I am conjuring Cassius. Louisville, Kentucky born, 
reborn manifestation of Midwestern midsummer storm. 40 years, infinite listening ears transformed by his assault on convention. Seeking to conjure the core of my elder Muhammad Ali. Ain't no Viet Cong ever call me nigger. Trigger to his career, sneer smooth like late spring 7.30 p.m. sun over the San Francisco Bay, a man of his principles. You know they was gonna put his loud ass on the front lines anyway. He saved his ideals and his ass. Master brown butter, Bzzz. Olympic gold medalist. Backpedal his opponent into stiff left hands. I am conjuring caches. Path of his footprints, the blueprint of the MC Muhammad Ali. North star and night sky, a first journey on Caspian Sea. The hollow point tip truths you dare speak. The music you speak is Lena Horn classic sorceress banter with onyx thick confidence. The vixen merely fits pyramids and square circles. Three times the enigmatic length of pi, the ancestors I believe must have wished for you to beat Babe Ruth's ass. Outlast Mike Jordan by bounds, cause the sound of Ayer's voice is not heard as Mumia continues to sit. Ali, steady, silent, still talking shit. Metaphors so slick they soon be like similes of Solomon songs. Fuck getting along, you and Malcolm was set tripping, not even speaking in 65. I wonder if y'all are cool now up there in the sky. Eyes peering Kentucky through pinhole thin glimmer of hope light. Smoke soaks back alley back rooms where blacks loom jabbing like Cassius the jaws and the litany of blue laughter that roars lying courageous square circle stages the greatest of all time fighting beyond the light and line bittersweet sun earth wonder number nine right job right job let's talk ain't nobody at ringside even saw nobody peeped it but Sonny listens jaw get up you want some more listen to them now Ali so moved to tears the black planet that they fear still in your stare. Long hot summers racing, riots blazing, brazen the brass, circling circumference of media, cipher, flight for freedom, urgency, testifying truth, so smooth, Cosell. Brown butterfly wings, the size and scope of Shungo, bolting quiet thunder, penumbra, delicate glow, Parkinson's disrupting the late August midnight breeze ease of your speech. Media typed falling king. Gold medal don't mean shit without freedom ring. Toss it in the river, floss and flaunt and taunt. And I'm a bad man, haunting humility before the divine. Allah Akbar daily. Five times I'm conjuring. Cash is I'm conjuring. You know, like an artist. Ali's physical labor was the central site of our public viewing. But what made him an icon is what he was able to generate outside of his formal gallery, outside of the boxing ring. So here I am, undivorced from my other selves. I am in my body as artist, as child of migration, and as staff at a large contemporary arts center in San Francisco. You can imagine a place like Yerba Buena Center for the Arts is positioned to work like many cultural institutions, connecting to its environment through the primacy of its own aesthetics, driven by a mission to provide socially engaging content, less than intentionally impacting its social environment through active, energetic reciprocity. But when I was hired at my home institution, no one mandated me to stop being myself. Everything we are is everywhere we've been. So that doesn't just mean that I could continue to um, make objects like dances or plays or poems. It means that from an administrative perch, I apply an artist's thinking to curation, engagement, and administration. And the real life mission of the place that I'm supposed to administer is generate culture that moves people generate culture that moves people with a ridiculously talented staff with a particularly intuitive leader make culture 
not harbor it, not watch it go by, generate culture. So what happens when you've been trained in dialogue and creative, inclusive community investment alongside like uh, people like Theaster Gates and Jeff Chang and Roberta Uno and you can't get their voices out of your head? What questions are you then responsible to answer as you and your team begin um, pulling the levers of an austere cultural institution? At the same time, you're dreaming about a theater piece that accesses childhood memory and global pathology in the construction of a freedom suite for stage. You ask, can we imagine the artistic curation of community activation? Maybe you ask, is it possible to pedagogically choreograph social justice? Is it possible to pedagogically choreograph social justice? Can we design a social practice built on the instigations of a curated few? Can we manage the life cycle of an idea, build an ecosystem of creative individuals to respond to that idea, nurture those responses with artistic interactions, and then harvest the results in the form of public policy? Consider the life cycle of a law. Imagine it cynically and can, uh, you can insinuate that few ideas become law nowadays without first being tampered with um, by moneyed interests. That said, perhaps the only thing more powerful than private funds is public will. When YBCA describes its mission as generating culture that moves people, the bet that we're making is that we can activate how art influences the public imagination, that we can design a process whereby highly dynamic inquiry spawns culture. And as Jeff Chang so eloquently distills, culture precedes policy. So our new curatorial design begins with the belief that social change begins with the artists that are asking the right catalytic questions and we can organize our community to refine, reframe, and respond to those questions in a way that can seduce the public will. Um, we do this in six parts. Um, as a staff, um, we nominate and decide upon a list of culture makers that we call the YBCA 100. Um, we bring key members of this group together in a summit that looks like this. Word. So for those of you who are in town, November 5th, 2016, for those of you who are not in town, come holla at us. You see it, it's beautiful here. Just come check us out, November 5th, 2016. So from um, all of um, these questions that um, were asked at that last event in October, um, uh, me and my staff distilled them down to three. Uh, can we design freedom? What does equity look like? And why citizenship? Can we design freedom? Man, some shit. So um, what we do is we solicit responses to these questions from our multiple pub publics. And we eventually invite 90 YBCA fellows to each undergo a year's worth of curated experience and meetings. Um, over the course of a year, our fellows break into small working groups and use YBCA's curated events and curated artists as the complicating ground to digest the inquiry in an art framed way in an art framed way. Um, um, then we ask our fellows to publicly respond to these large questions. So um, you're looking at Candice Antique Wicks and Tommy Solati Shepard. Um, they were part of um, a body politic think tank that um, we, um, we organized in response to the question, what is on the other side of my body's joy? And also, what is on the other side of my body's shame? So this is a still from a song cycle that they um, performed in response to this question of shame and the body. They uh, created an entire song cycle around the history of black shame in the United States. Um, this is um, Danya Cabello who created um, a soccer workshop right outside of our theater, which is super hot. And um, she uh, developed this workshop intergenerationally in response to the question, what's on the other side of my body's joy? 
Um, from these public responses, um, we affirm um, this idea through public uh, affirmation. YBCA integrates these responses and the process into its brand profile to heighten the visibility of our creative ecosystem in the public imagination. So we're not just Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, we're the Center for the Art of doing something about it. We're the Center for the Art of Progress. We're the center for the art of expressing optimism against unfathomable odds. Um, if culture precedes policy, this cycle of asking, refining, prototyping, and celebrating begins to take root in the public will, impacting public and private partnerships and eventually inspiring shifts in local law. What that looks like, I'm not exactly sure, but I can imagine. So yes, as an art center, we bring together activists and philanthropists, artists, technologists, humanitarians, but who we curate for our stages is based on the belief that the burning questions that creative people are asking are the fertile ground for the world we want to make. We're inviting a plurality of communities to refine the questions of the artists among us, to essentialize them down to digestible and publicly actionable components, to join us in our building and around our region in a shared exercise of art-framed civic curiosity. So you can miss me with art that does not bleed or sweat or cry, and you can miss me with hermetically sealed art space is full of objects that you love but don't reach out to touch you back. I believe that art isn't other, it is of us and must be integrated into the cycle of social progress in a systemic way. So this is an idea a program structure that moves intentionally from inquiry to impact. Our adversaries have designed systems that effectively incarcerate us, that effectively deport us. We are literally wondering aloud, can we design freedom? My last question for you guys. What are two things that you love to do that would be essential components in your freedom design? two things, and for this, I don't know, you could just posse up. If you just, if you were in a group of two, if you were in a group of three, you could be in a group of five, but I'm gonna give you two minutes. What are two things that you love to do that would be essential components of your freedom design? I'll give you two and a half minutes. Um, so, um, I'm, sh I'm sharing all this stuff with you because I, I'm trying to demonstrate a continuum that connects arts practice to arts program to the pedagogy of the new majority in both institutional space and in the public sites that matter most to us. Um, the synthesis for these many cells uh, for me is manifest in a site-specific social project that I'm doing in partnership with the Guggenheim Museum that accesses Pelota's field of inquiry and creates a sports-based political action for kids of color, particularly young immigrants and their parents. My project design is centered around afternoons of soccer clinics and political education in Harlem and the South Bronx. Um, I overlay choreography on top of traditional skill building soccer drills. I teach that choreography to several hundred youth and then I use an excerpt of Pelota to reveal to the young people the connection between that choreography and strategies for cultural integrity within the context of American Promise. My primary partners in the work are the cast of Pelota, um, two New York City city-based soccer clubs, youth clubs, FC Harlem, and South Bronx United. I'm uh, collaborating with East Harlem's High Arts to leverage site-based project support, and also with National Immigration Advocacy Group Culture Strike for curricular and pedagogical support. Um, the project is called Moving and Passing, and it intersects curriculum development, site-specific performance, and the politics of joy. Um, my theater company recently spent two days working with the coaches of the youth that I'm talking about, and we learned a whole bunch of drills from them. Um, then we went back into the studio and we re-engineered those drills as choreography and worked on this facilitated process for turning the choreography into sites for skill building as intended, but also as opportunities for performance and political education. Um, two weeks from today, we'll be in the South Bronx 
um, uh, hosting a soccer-framed festival of possibility for 200 New York City youth, where they do a bunch of ball-based exercises as devised by the coaches, um, but they also learn um, each of these choreographed pieces that my company devises. Um, but we're not going to tell them that they're doing choreography. Um, each piece is a drill to help them develop their awareness of the field of play. So we'll call them agility drills. But they'll actually be dancing in tandem with developing their on-the-ball skills. So after running through each drill, there'll be an art moment like this. These are the Marching Cobras, a community marching band from Harlem, USA. So towards the end of the day, my company will perform an excerpt from Pelota called Moving Without the Ball, which uses some of the movement patterns that the young people will just have learned, but additionally uses poetic text to contextualize um, those drills and movement as social concepts. Our team of performers, coaches, and Culture Strike then engage the young soccer players in on-field art making, where they're guided through workshops meant to extract poetry and visual iconography that that connects moving on the field without the ball to moving through this country without possession of center. Again, I share this all with you, hopefully to illustrate a connection between the art that one makes, the rigor needed to systematize how our cultural products intentionally feed our collective path towards social equity and activation, and the design of a freedom module that connects the sites of our joy with the psychology of access and citizenship. This, of course, isn't so much about several projects as much as it is about one broad ambition, which for me is to normalize joy in the politics of liberation. It may seem, thank you, it may seem obvious to you, but here's why black joy is worth it. Glory to the kid on the other side of the scope. The cop ain't shooting at you, he's aiming at a trope. He's got a blind spot in his privileges shaped exactly like him. He's been training by naming large mountains after small men, paying no attention when the leaves change, when the leaves fall, when it freezes over, when the season frees us all. Somber is the sober of full lip smile and spring awakening. Joy is a human right. Spring is for the taking in. Melanin baking in the social shifting framing of the sable skin, black satin stunting, stunning beauty, a culture of the songs of dislocation, a people of the water singing to me, sing of joy right now, before my small boy becomes scary, while he's still able to tell the dancer's story without using his body, before he masters social forms in an age of technological norms, before his default position is somebody else's voice. Listen, child, it is likely that the black psyche is a ventriloquist for American aggression a territory for transgression in these last flush days of Camelot. These murdered boys are cultural events, scripts for the performance of outrage, hooded plot, left to rot for hours in blood on the asphalt fields where they're shot. So I sing of salt and moan, of brown and blue, of wanting one more day to get it right, of joy in the living black body and how that matters, the matter of the beating heart, the factor sacrosanct in the stars of soul carves in heaven's palms as it walks earth in heaven's shell, skin the color of the other side of the stars, man, dark, like the dawn that swallowed Sean Bell in acceptance of our most excessive expectation, in expectation that our highest selves will prevail. Make joy material. Let the ceremony begin. Let the sacks unmask the task of healing. 
open fifths to lift the unquenched thirst for grieving. In the wind, a word winds itself into the drawl of a blind whim, open, vibrant, half of prayer, an arctic blast of free at last, cast in the case of living joy while black. Thank you for your time.